Hi, my name's Andy, and um, this video will only be of interest to anybody that uh, has a passing interest in either uh, clock escapements or electromechanical devices. Uh, essentially, what I'm setting out to do is make a little clock out of junk that I've got in the workshop. Uh, there's all sorts of things I should be doing. Uh, I should be making other videos on radio repairs which I've sort of started and not finished but I, I get distracted very easily and I figure I can do what the heck I like. Um, so I will get round to finishing those radio videos. Um, but this is a, a little uh, clock mechanism so I've got a pendulum with a little toddle on it and uh, that toddle um, operates um, a set of contacts which in turn energizes a coil and uh, that coil pulls the bottom of the pendulum and uh, increases its swing uh, as, uh, as its swing decays. Uh, so it's, uh, I'm not setting out to make a precision instrument at all um, but I love this uh, HIPS uh, mechanism because it's, um, it, I guess it's an analog device and it's a bit like a hit and miss engine and that is uh, it only takes energy when it needs it and um, I'll take you through what I've got so far and um, uh, ultimately I hope to make a nice little clock that can go in the lounge um, but this is, <laughs> this, is, this is just rubbish so this is not a finished article this is uh, just a little bit about how I get to where I'm going uh, so I hope you find it interesting in the normal course of events uh, a weight or a spring uh, would be uh, wound up and then the uh, pendulum would operate some escape mechanism that um, released uh, energy from the spring or from the weights and um, the, the pendulum would set the the timing of the release. Uh, in this case what's happening is the pendulum is um, uh, calling for uh, a kick of energy when uh, its swing diminishes and, and that's established by this device. So this thing that's uh, held by a, a drawing pin or a thumbtack as some people call it uh, that's a little hips toddle and uh, what happens is the pendulum swings and um, if it's got a lot of energy it, its uh, swing is such that the hips toddle actually skates over the top of that little contact set um, but as the swing diminishes uh, so the toggle gets caught on that little contact set and you see there it presses the contacts down on the return swing. Um, the weight of the pendulum here is uh, from this G-clamp that I've got around it, so nothing very scientific. Um, and as those contacts close, so it energises um, the little uh, coil that I've got down here. I'll show you that. So there's the coil, and I've put this little LED on, so it's, uh, that's uh, across the coil, so we can see when those contacts close. We get a pulse of energy, and we can see when it's uh, when that pulse is occurring. And the idea is that it it should occur in such a fashion as to draw the pendulum towards the uh, central core of the um, little coil there, so a little electromagnet, and I can uh, influence that timing by moving the coil. Um, so if I move it too far, then clearly it'll be providing a pulse of energy when the it, you see it's trying, but it, it's just swinging down there. Um, so clearly one's got to have that in the the right uh, place to get the shot of energy at the right instant of time. So in the normal course of events uh, as I say there would be a weight 
um, or a spring that would drive the pendulum but here I'm using this coil to drive the pendulum and the timing of the pendulum is subject to its length and its mass etc and uh, what I shall do then is use the pendulum to actually drive a clockwork mechanism uh, via a little ratchet from somewhere high up on the pendulum and that'll simply push the mechanism round and will drive the hands round. At least that's a theory. It's all been done before. It's not my idea. This is uh, uh, a guy called Hips, H-I-P-P-S, and I think it's, it's down to him in the first place. And uh, say, this is not about precision, this is just about me playing. I'll just run this bit in slow motion so you can see the light comes on attracting the pendulum and then it uh, switches off. Probably a little bit too soon, I could have uh, done with closing the contacts for longer or maybe moving the coil a bit to the right. Here it is again. So it's, it's probably not too bad in that position, but clearly it's all about timing and uh, reducing that air gap, etc. I've got various relays uh, that I could have used, uh, but uh, this is the one um, that uh, I've chosen to use. It's a 12 volt coil, but uh, not that the voltage matters at all. I just need a, a little magnetic impulse and uh, here I've stripped it down. This is the setup I've got for uh, just carrying out a little experiment with this uh, pendulum. So I've got a power supply there. I've set that up so as it'll give me uh, 2.5 volts, so 2.5 volts, and that'll be fed into that little uh, coil there. That's what I've just taken out of the relay there. And then I've got a, a G-clamp fixed onto a pendulum there, and that pendulum is uh, that I'll put a hook in the ceiling and um, that pendulum is 1.1 meters long or thereabouts and all I'm setting out to do is uh, establish that that little coil will pull that G-clamp uh, by magnetic force uh, with something like a 3 volt battery that's gone flat to 2.5 volts um, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get set up a little bit closer in so uh, this is the coil and that's uh, designated as um, 12 volts um, and uh, it has a, a resistance of 81 ohms. So I've just got that clamp to a bit of wood that's stuck in the vise there. And then this G-clamp is hanging off the pendulum there. And I've got it set up such that this is a 10 millimeter gap between there. <coughs> and now I'm just gonna make contact with this wire onto this terminal and I'm just going to um, try and get the pendulum into oscillation so I want to get it so as you can see what's happening there so I'll touch it now and I'm just giving it a, a positive pulse as the G-clamp swings in the right direction obviously the smaller the air gap the greater the attraction of the magnet I've changed the setup now so I'm using this uh, little bit of uh, bent metal as an armature and I've got a gap there of, uh, if I could get it in focus, of uh, oh, probably one and a half millimeters. I've set the power supply up to give me uh, two and a half volts again. So I'll just. Uh, And that looks as though that's uh, it will give me plenty of energy. What 
now I look at this it just occurs to me that I might be better off taking the armature out of the coil and fixing it to the pendulum itself um, and that way I would embrace all of the magnetic field uh, I'd need a smaller um, armature so as I don't rub but I might have a look at that okay this is the same setup as before but now I've uh, drilled through the end of the pendulum and put a uh, steel uh, bolt through there or a bit of studding and I've got 5 volts on the uh, coil now we'll just okay I thought I'd put these other bits uh, in the different methods just out of interest hope you find it interesting thanks for watching Bye bye. You'll see it's coming through a bit more each time. So that would work.